Hi, David Lally here at Virginia Tech, and I'd like to answer a question I get asked all the time when I'm talking to people about the Arabidopsis mutants that we use in our experiments. And that is, how do you make the Arabidopsis mutants? Or, how do you disable a gene? Most of the Arabidopsis mutants that plant scientists use these days are created through a process called insertional mutagenesis. The way we disable the genes in these mutants is by inserting a piece of DNA into the gene that doesn't belong there. You might notice that the word insertional has the word insert in it. So how does that disable a gene? Let me give you an analogy. Look at this word. You probably can't read it because I've inserted a group of letters into the middle of it. But what if I removed the group of letters in the middle and pushed the letter L over? Then you'd see that it's the word love. Words are very specific sequences of letters. If you insert a string of letters in the middle of a word, it stops functioning because it loses its meaning. Genes, which are made of DNA, are very specific sequences of chemical letters called nucleotides. The average Arabidopsis gene is about 2,500 genetic letters long. Just like the word love stopped functioning when we inserted a string of letters in the middle of it, we can disable the function of a gene by inserting a piece of DNA into it that doesn't belong there. That's exactly what we've done with our Arabidopsis mutants. In each mutant, we've inserted a piece of DNA into the gene 4,500 genetic letters long so that it no longer makes a functional gene product. Well, that's the big idea. Now I want to tell you how we get a piece of DNA into the plant genome where the genes are kept. And to do that, I'm going to take you over to the greenhouse and introduce you to one of the world's tiniest genetic engineers. Let's go! Hi again. I'm in the greenhouse of Virginia Tech. And as I mentioned before, we need a way to get DNA into the plant's genome. And in order to do that, we rely on a tiny little genetic engineer called Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Now at the base of this tomato plant, you'll see a growth. That growth is called a crown gall. And that was formed by the Agrobacterium inserting three genes into the plant's genome. Two of the genes are there just to make that crown gall. It tells the plant, make a whole bunch of cells. The last gene tells the plant to make the food for the bacterium. So you have this whole group of cells here that does one thing, make food for the agrobacterium. Very tricky little bacterium that has managed to do this. We're going to use that ability in order to create our mutants. About 30 years ago, a scientist named Mary Dell Chilton and her colleagues demonstrated that you could remove the disease genes from the agrobacterium without affecting its ability to insert DNA into the plant's genome. In other words, the molecular machinery that the agrobacterium uses to deliver DNA into the plant's genome is still intact. That meant we could remove the disease genes and replace them with any piece of DNA we wanted, including whole genes. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go visit my friend Ryan Anderson over in Latham Hall, who's using Agrobacterium to put some DNA into his plants. Now I'm here with Ryan Anderson, and he's going to show us how we take the Agrobacterium and we use it to put the DNA into the Arabidopsis plants. How's it going, Ryan? Not too bad. Thanks, David. Well, here's my Arabidopsis plant, and, and here now I have all my agrobacterium that were genetically engineered to contain the DNA we like to study. So in this solution here, we have billions of agrobacterium uh, swimming about and they're ready to go into our Arabidopsis plant. This agrobacterium has been modified so all the disease genes have been removed. So now it can no longer cause a crown gall that you saw earlier. Now all I have to do is take my plants and dip them into the suspension of agrobacterium. The part I'm most interested in targeting are the floral organs, or the flowers. We'll let these plants soak in the suspension for 15 minutes. I will take them out, let them finish growing, and harvest the seed. 
The agrobacteria are attracted to chemicals released by the plants and migrate to the surface of the plant cells. Once attached to the surface of the plant, the DNA that we engineered into the agrobacterium is transferred into the plant cell and shuttled to the plant nucleus where it's integrated into the plant's chromosomes. Scientists had to do what Ryan showed you thousands of times in order to create a mutant line for each of the 25,000 Arabidopsis genes. But now we have almost a complete set of mutant lines for Arabidopsis. Thousands of scientists around the world use these mutant lines in order to discover the function of plant genes. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for stopping by at Virginia Tech, and happy Arabidopsising!